In today's video, I am going to show you how to add piping to your dog coats. Now, I add piping around all the edges of my dog coats for two reasons. Number one, which is the most important reason, is that I use reflective piping, and it means that it's super highly visible in low light situation. So when your dog's out at nighttime, your dog's going to glow in the dark, which is really important for their safety and for the functionality of the coat. The other reason that I add piping is because typically when I'm making a coat, I have a lined coat. And when you add piping between the lining and the outside, it gives it a really nice professional look to the edges. So in this video, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to start your piping, how to finish the piping so that you get a really nice seamless edge where you can hardly even see where it starts or finishes. And I'm also going to show you how to do the corners around an outside corner, around the inside corners, so that you get a really nice seamless edge to it and you don't get any bumps or wrinkles or stretching of the fabric. So the first thing I like to do is set up my sewing machine. Now, everybody has their own way of doing things, but I thought I'd just share with you a trick that I use to help me keep my sewing straight. I get some painter's tape and place it on the throat plate to match up with my seam allowance. Using the painter's tape as a guide helps you to keep your sewing going straight along that line. The next thing I do before I start is I put a top thread that is closely matching to the piping that I'm sewing in and I put the bottom thread that's going to be a contrasting color to my outer fabric. The reason I use a matching color to my piping on my top thread is because if I happen to stitch outside of the bounds of the basting on the piping, it's not going to be as noticeable on the outside of the garment. The black thread that I'm using here is a contrasting color to my outer fabric. And it's really important that you have something that you can easily see later on when you're stitching because you need to follow that stitching line in order to sew the lining to your coat. The first thing you want to do is start your sewing about two inches past the beginning of the piping. So start by clipping the piping to the right side of your fabric. You want to clip it so that the basting lines are in line with your seam allowance. Line your fabric up to the painter's tape on your float plate and line the needle up with the basting stitches on the piping. Set up your stitch length to about 2.5 to 3 and then sew following the basting stitches. When you come to inside corners, grab your tailor's chalk and make a few lines on the piping as it bends around the corner. Then grab your scissors and make little notches in the white lining part of the piping on each of those marks. This will allow for the piping to wrap around that corner more smoothly without any puckering or folds. When you come to a sharp corner, you're going to want to put a notch in that to fully open it up. I use my stitch ripper to hold the piping down and then wrap the piping around the corner. Then I grab my tailor's chalk and make a mark right on that corner. Then I grab my scissors and I cut out a notch right at that mark. Then I use my stitch ripper to hold the piping in place as I begin to sew again. When I get to the corner, I'm going to make sure that my needle is in the down position as I pick up the presser foot. Then I'll pivot the material and start sewing again. When you come to outside corners, you're going to put some slits in the piping in order to ease that around the corner. So grab your tailor's chalk and just make a few lines around where that corner is on your piping. Then grab your scissors and make small slits into the white part of the lining on the piping. This allows the piping to open up and fold more smoothly around those outside corners. When you've finished piping almost the entire piece, stop when you get about three inches before the beginning of your piping. Then grab your stitch ripper and pull out the basted stitches on the part of the piping that you started your sewing on. Pull out all the basted stitches all the way down to where you started your sewing. 
Then separate the white lining and the cord that is inside the piping. Then grab your scissors and cut the end part of your piping right at the beginning of your sewing and then cut the inside lining and the cord as well at the same point. What you want to do is make sure that the cord from the end part of your piping is joining up with the beginning part where you've snipped the cord. The idea is that the cord will run smoothly from one end to the other. Then you want to fold over the empty end of the reflective tape by about an inch. You're going to use this end to wrap around the tail end of the piping. So then sew a little bit closer and then use the stitch ripper to help wrap that folded edge over the tail end of the piping. The stitch ripper really helps to hold everything in place as you sew closer. And then you just want to sew until you reach the point where you started and then just double back and forth a few times and then you're done. You should have a beautiful piece of piping where you can hardly see where the beginning or the end is. Make sure that the bottom half of the reflective tape has also been caught within your sewing. You don't want to have any part of this to be hanging out. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my videos down below and turn on notifications so that you don't miss a video when it comes out. I'll be doing videos every week, so there'll be lots to learn on how to make functional dog wear for your dog.